Hey everyone, it's Joel Woodbridge, and I want to welcome you to the Next Steps podcast from the woods, a podcast all about helping you discover how you can grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, whether you've grown up in the church or are brand new to following Jesus, we all have areas where we can better know God intimately, grow in community with others, serve on a ministry team, and share in Christ's mission to the world. My hope today is that you will be encouraged to take a next step to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to today and our podcast. Uh, Today I am excited because we are starting kind of a new topic over the next few weeks and I've got with me uh, a good friend and colleague in ministry, Pastor Blake Owings. Hello. Hey. Yeah, Blake is uh, our youth pastor here at The Woods and uh, he actually is the guy who came and replaced me in ministry. Yep. So uh, excited to have you with us on the podcast today. Um, yep. Our viewers, our folks, we've been uh, just kind of talking about uh, stuff that we've been teaching and, and that sort of thing in our in our uh, church services and um, trying to figure out what are some of the next steps that we can take in, in our conversation. Mm-hmm. So that's what this whole podcast is, is uh, helping people take the next step in, in their relationship so that they can grow close, closer to um, their, their fellow Christians, uh, closer in the uh, knowledge of God and, and all of that. So um, today we're talking about um, equipping the church for the work of ministry. And it's kind of coming from this um, passage that Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 4, um, where he says that uh, he urges us to live a life that is worthy of the calling that we've received. And as you think about the calling that we've received as Christians, mm-hmm. Um, that involves relationship with one another, right? Like we are called um, to be in community. We are called uh, to share the gospel and you can't share the gospel unless you're in relationship with other people, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And so uh, he talks about this idea that in order for you to be able to have this life that is worthy of the calling, you've got to be humble, you've got to be patient, you've got to be gentle with one another, you've got to bear with one another in love and all of that, right? Um, and so it's kind of interesting as he, he, he talks about this life that is worthy of this calling that we've received. He emphasizes a, a kind of a concept that's a, a theological fact for us that um, unity is very, very important for us, right? In order for us to live a life worthy of the calling, we have to be united as God's children, as God's people, right? And uh, it's a theological fact in the sense that uh, God is one. There is one God. And Paul even mentions this. There's one God, one Father, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one hope, one spirit, one body, all that stuff, right? Uh, uh, and because of that theological fact, that's why he says you've got to be united um, and do everything you can to keep that unity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so today we want to kind of talk a little bit about this. How do we keep unity in the body of Christ, um, in a culture and a world right now where division and disagreements like crazy come out, Mm -hmm. how do we as Christians seek unity? How do we make every effort, as he says, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace? How do we do that? What are some of your thoughts? Yeah, um, we've actually been talking about this with our uh, middle school um, class and a couple of things that, you know, we kind of discovered in there. A lot of, you know, keeping this unity is just kind of this willingness to to serve, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, and even in, uh, we're kind of in Ephesians uh, 4, chapter 9, it talks about, you know, Christ not only ascended and from heaven he descended Mm -hmm. right and he came and kind of took this lowly position of serving and doing the things um, that most people wouldn't want to do in order to you know create those um, relationships you know and and through and through serving and trying to build the church you know and different people having different um, skill sets and things that they're good at that brings unity because then we're, we're serving people, but we're also bringing in um, people from different backgrounds with different skill sets, with different different thoughts. Sure. Um, yeah. So it, it's almost like you, you got to come to the understanding that 
first of all, unity is not conformity, Mm -hmm. right? Yes. That what what Christ is seeking in in his church and what Paul is talking about here is not that we are all identical, we look all Mm -hmm. the same, we talk all the same, we act all the same. He's not talking about that. He's talking about um, something very, very different, Mm -hmm. that we're united in the work and the effort um, because of who Christ is, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing that I think of when I think about this idea of unity, it doesn't mean that we're not ever going to disagree. Yes. Right. Uh, disagreement in one sense, it, it's, it's inevitable. Like, mm-hmm. um, because if you remember a few weeks ago, one of the things that we talked about in dysfunctional families, if you've been listening to our podcast, we talked about one of the things that makes families dysfunctional is the fact that we all want our own way. Mm-hmm. I want my way, you want your way. And when you put these types of relationships together, people who want their way, mm-hmm. eventually there's going to be someone who doesn't get their way, right? Yeah. And so it causes conflict, causes disagreement, right? That's what's going to happen. It's 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 inevitable. It's going to happen in the body of Christ. It's what we do with that that makes the difference. And so what Paul says, uh, one of the things that he says is um, that you have to be, again, go back to this list, you have to be humble. Mm-hmm. Right, there's there's no way to have unity if there's pride involved. And in, in other words, thinking I'm the one who's right, uh, I'm the one who knows what the best solution. I'm the one who has all the answers. I'm the one who knows what you need to do. Right, that's not humility. That's pride. Mm-hmm. Uh, he talks about this idea of you got to be gentle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, you can't be brutal with people. Right, you've got to be gentle and patience is another thing that you can't expect someone to be where you are if they haven't lived perhaps as long as you have or mm-hmm. or haven't grown as much as you know so being patient with one another in the sense of 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 giving them the time and space for God to do what only God can do yeah. right yeah. it's kind of the idea I think that Paul is getting at here and bearing with one another in other words being okay with our differences being mm-hmm. okay with the fact that yes we are sometimes going to disagree yeah. uh, yes there are times when we're we're gonna have our uh, opinions come in conflict but mm-hmm. uh, um, Paul uh, what I love what he does is he says when you when you make this effort um, You've got to make sure that, uh, first of all, it's grounded in who Christ is, Mm -hmm. right? Christ is uh, united with the Father, the the Spirit. Uh, You you get the image of the Trinity in this, and and all of a sudden, because of that theological fact, Mm -hmm. he wants a body that's united as well, right? So um, kind of moving from there, um, one of the things that Paul talks about, and you, you mentioned this very well, I love what you said, is is that there's this idea of, of serving one another. Mm-hmm. That, um, that, that part of our, our uh, understanding of unity comes when we actually start to serve. Yeah. And that's what he goes into next, mm-hmm. right? Um, he even talks about church leaders and what their role and responsibility is, is to equip the body for works of service, mm-hmm. right? Um, have you ever had moments when you feel like as a clergy, you're expected to, uh, member of the clergy, church leadership, that you're kind of expected to uh, uh, to just do ministry because that's what we pay you to do? Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, there's kind of that that pressure of, you know, sometimes, I, I, I don't know if it's just me or like if I've caught this from other stuff, but sometimes I feel like, oh, well, I have to do this because, yeah, I'm paid. And you're like, oh, I got to, yeah. I kind of have to figure that out on my own, which, you know, that's not what... God calls us to, and that's not right. unity. Usually, I I find myself more just stressed out and mm-hmm. not able to do things as well because it's it's sometimes it's difficult to give that up because I feel like oh well it's my job yeah you know instead of you know really our job is kind of what you're saying is to equip people to do those right. jobs. Not not saying that oh, we don't ever do any of the things that right. we're equipping right. people to do, but sometimes it's it's so easy to just get this. Oh, well, I'm I'm the paid person, so I have to do it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, it's kind of interesting when you think about it. Um, sometimes pastors, uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you've had this experience or not, but but for me personally, sometimes I get this mentality that uh, because I'm paid to do it, mm-hmm. uh, it's my job. But not not just that, but also this idea of. Um, I really like to do it yeah, and I can yeah. do it 
pretty well at times, mm -hmm. you know? And so we kind of get this almost like a, a superhero yeah. complex a little yeah. bit, like, like we're pretty good mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we're the, we're strong, we're powerful. Yeah. We can, you know, that, yeah, all you that got your stuff. degree, you got yeah. your doctorate, you, yeah. you know, you're yeah. like, I, you, you've trained for it. So yeah. why don't, why am yeah. I not? Yeah. The one and what's interesting is. about that is mm -hmm. even the perception, and, and this is kind of more like you mentioned there's mm -hmm. sometimes there's internal pressure, but there's also yeah. external pressure. Sometimes the internal pressure that I have is uh, that because I've got the degrees, because I've got the the position, and because I'm getting paid, that I should be able to do all of it, mm -hmm. right? So I should be able to yeah. teach, I should be able to preach, I should be able to evangelize, I should be able to discipleship, I should be able to lead worship, I should be able to do all of these things, you know, mm -hmm. like be a master yeah. of every single thing that the church requires. Yeah. But again, <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. that is not unity. Yeah, no. that's not what Paul's talking about here. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but that's not humility either. That's 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 pride kind of coming yeah. in again. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of interesting uh, that what he talks about is this idea of equipping the church. Mm -hmm. um, that that what our job is as pastors is to help people. Um, do the works of ministry so that the body of Christ can be built up. Yeah. So how do you uh, do that? How, how do you as a pastor kind of wrestle mm -hmm. with this just a little bit? How do you as a pastor yeah. help um, build up the church? How do you equip people? Um, so one of the ways I do, especially, you know, working with, with teenagers is I try to find opportunities to give teenager stuff to do. So typically on, on Wednesday nights, uh, every once in a while I'll lead the questions, but I will let one of the students, you know, lead the questions to kind of get yeah. them used, you know, I'm not putting them up front and say, Hey, go preach, but yeah. you know, I'm getting them used to being able to talk and to think through um, questions themselves. Yeah. And sometimes even when I'm, when I'm leading stuff, um, you know, there's definitely times where like I'm teaching, but I try to ask a lot more questions sure. than saying a lot than just saying statements to get them thinking about stuff. And, um, you know, we're also kind of working, uh, Joel and I have been talking about, you know, we want to get some students involved with our worship ministry, mm -hmm. you know, and just trying, trying to find ways, you know, we're not just throwing people into, Hey, we're going to put you in charge of this, but, yeah. but gradually working them in and saying like, Hey, you know, just trying to figure out what are, what are you good at? What are some skills yep. that God has, has given you, you know, and just creating those opportunities. You know, we even have, we have several students that run the sound yep. uh, and the, and the video stuff in the back. So, you know, just finding those, those little things so that, you know, they not say, you know, they, they make tons of mistakes, but yep. that's yep. okay because <laughs> they're, they're, they're developing those skills sure. that, you know, later in life or even now in life, you know, they're, they're serving the church and that's kind of that idea of, of this unity yeah. that you're talking about is that we have all these different parts that are making this service happen where if I was the one that was like, okay, I'm going to run, I can't run the sound, run the slides, run the music, do the preaching, do the, all the questions. Like I don't, I, I physically can't yeah. do all that. I yeah. could try to do it, but yep. it wouldn't work very well. And then you're, you're missing out on getting, yeah. that all these people to do the things that God has given them skills for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God has given skills. God has given grace. In fact, that's what Paul says is that, uh, that each one of us has been given a grace by as Christ apportioned. Mm -hmm. it. so, um, and, and ultimately, you know, what's kind of interesting about this unity and, and why he's given, uh, the church, the, the leaders that he has, you know, the pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, those mm -hmm. kind of the ones he mentions in, in Ephesians 4. Um, the reason why he's done this is ultimately so that you and I and, and, and all of those who would be part of the body of Christ could be more, uh, could grow up, mm -hmm. could be more like Christ, right? They, they yeah. look more like him. They sound more like him. They act more like him. They behave mm -hmm. more like him. All, all of that, right? And sometimes what I wonder is if we're not seeking Christ likeness, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Paul talks about how we need to grow up. We can't be infants anymore. Yeah. Um, we need to grow up as Christians. Um, if we're not growing, if we're not using our gifts, if we're not seeking unity, all of that, 
what are we doing? Yes. <laughs> you know, you, mm -hmm. you kind of wonder like, why do we even meet? Why do we yeah. gather? If, if we're not yeah. really trying to grow in our mm -hmm. relationship with Jesus Christ, then, then why gather? Yeah. You know, why, why have, are we just playing a game? Are we just going through the motions, that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, here mm -hmm. at, at Wanamaker, one of the things that we really, we really try to do is emphasize this idea of what it looks like to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. We talk mm -hmm. about knowing God intimately. Um, we talk about uh, uh, growing in community with others. We talk about serving on a ministry team. Mm -hmm. And we also talk about sharing in Christ's mission to the world. I mean, those yeah. kind of four buzzwords, know, grow, serve, and share, are kind of some key things that we really, really try to emphasize here at, at Wanamaker, that we're growing in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, and so uh, one of the kind of last questions that we, we wrestle with is this idea of, of belonging, mm -hmm. right? Um, because of the fact that God has given each one of us a grace, a gift, mm -hmm. uh, because unity is what we're seeking, the reality is is that, th that we can look at the people in our congregation. We can look at the people yeah. who are, are sitting in the pews as we're, as we're teaching or in the youth ministry, kind of that thing, and really mean it when we say this, you belong here, mm -hmm. right? You belong here, and, and um, you have a role to play here. And so the question that we wrestle with then is how are you engaging? Mm -hmm. How are you getting yourself involved? Um, because if we just come and just, you know, sit on, it's almost like we're just kind of sitting to watch. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not the image that you get when Paul talks about this. And yeah. so um, one of the questions I, I, I want to wrestle with is how do we as Christians, and, and maybe this is one of the questions that our viewers are, 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 are wrestling with, is mm -hmm. how do we better engage in the church? Mm -hmm. how, do, how do we get more involved? If we have a role, yeah. if we belong here, how do we mm -hmm. do that? Yeah, I think... So you, um, <laughs> that's a big yeah, question. I'm yeah. going to leave it with you. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, if, if you're, you're reading the scripture, you know, notice one of the things that like he doesn't say. Okay. He doesn't say you have to be good at this stuff, <laughs> right? You know, he just says you, you kind of have to do it, right? So part, I think sometimes we're, we're too hesitant to take that leap of faith to get involved in church because we're like, well, maybe there's someone better, there's someone right? Oh, better there's than, those pastors yeah. up there that are getting paid that have those degrees. But, some, but what God calls us to do is just to start doing stuff yeah and it's okay if we start doing something and we find out hey this isn't working yeah. for me yeah but that just means we move on and try to find other ways to serve yeah right so we kind of need to get past that barrier of you know That's i'm not i might not be good at this but god says he'll equip us right mm -hmm. god says if we if we need wisdom and if we have questions about, you know, how do I do this? He's going to give those things yeah. to us. So we yeah. just need to actually step out and do those things yeah. and just say, you know, go up to your pastor or small group leader and say, Hey, I want to, I want to serve. What, yeah. what can I do? And we'll, we'll find ways yeah. for you to do that. Man, so, that mm -hmm. That's really, really good. I, I like mm -hmm. that, that, uh, he, he doesn't say that you have to be excellent. You have mm -hmm. to be perfect and you have to be able to do this without any flaws or anything yeah. like that. Um, cause we're definitely it, it, flawless oh, when, it, yeah, when it comes to uh, yeah. being pastors. Uh, so. And, and, yeah. and one of the key things there is he equips those whom he calls, mm -hmm. right? He, he doesn't, um, call those who are already equipped. You think of, of the disciples, they were not ready mm -hmm. to be disciples no. when they were first called, but he equipped them. Mm -hmm. He gave them what yeah. he what they needed in order to do the the, the mission that he had them mm -hmm. ready, uh, what he wanted yeah. for them to do, and and, and I'm sure you've probably felt this way too. Mm -hmm. uh, in my ministry, there have been so many times where I felt I'm not the right person for this job. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a clue how I can do this. I don't know how I can what what to say in this situation to this teenager or something like that, or to this couple who is in desperate need of, of some guidance and counsel and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. No clue what to say. Uh, becoming a, the, a lead pastor of, of a church like this where I've had no experience as a lead pastor. Yeah. I am not the most qualified person for this. There, there's someone who who is much more qualified. Mm -hmm. But 
God equips those whom he calls, mm-hmm. right? And I, I love what you said there. Like, you don't have to be, you don't have to be good at it, mm-hmm. yeah. but he will get you there, right? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's just amazing. I, I really like that. That's good. Yeah. So, so I hope that today our conversation has been a little bit helpful on, on equipping and uh, getting ready for the works of ministry. Um, I hope that we've, we've inspired you a little bit today in our conversation. So uh, to take the next step to uh, grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to come back next week and tune in and we will have a a, a continuation of this conversation and uh, pray a blessing over you and have a great week. We'll see you next time.